Hello. Thank you for having me. Um, great to, to be here in Mexico City, my first time. So it's, uh, it's been quite an eye-opening experience, especially the traffic, which seems to be the second topic of discussion after startups here. Uh, so I'm here taking a bit of a different angle. I'm representing the University of Waterloo. Uh, I work at the Conrad Business Entrepreneurship and Technology Center, which is really the academic engine around entrepreneurship at the University of Waterloo. And, uh, but I'm going to talk about the region as a whole, how it plays into the context of the uh, innovation strategy in Canada, about the Toronto Waterloo Corridor, about our startup ecosystem, and about our programming. So it should give you a bit of a, an overview of uh, what's happening in, uh, in this area of Canada. So it's a small audience, but how many of you have ever heard of Waterloo, dare I ask? Besides the Canadians, they can. <laughs> so when the Canadians aren't in the room, no one has heard of Waterloo. Look, it's amazing. So I've taken this line, what's in the water uh, in Waterloo? It's actually a quote by our Governor General, David Johnston, who's also the former president of the University of Waterloo. Um, and it's interesting because there's a lot of focus right now on Waterloo and what's happening, not only at the university, but in the startup, startup ecosystem as a whole. And, uh, and I think that the reason that's happening is, of course, we have a lot of economic activity and, and success in startups, but it's, uh, it's based on a model of collaboration. And it's actually interesting when my, when my colleagues from, from Canada came up to speak, I noticed that the word collaboration kept on falling and falling and falling. And I think that is a true recipe for success, certainly in our region. So since you don't know where we are, that's where we are. We're 100 kilometers west of Toronto. And uh, we're a region of about half a million people, three cities, Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge. Uh, we have 65,000 students that reside in the, uh, in the area. And we have 1,000 tech companies, uh, which is quite phenomenal considering the size of our community. Um, and, uh, and, you know, the, the kind of distance that we are from, from a large metropolitan area like Toronto. Does anyone know who these people are? Anyone recognized what these people are doing here? This is a, a photo. It's probably taken in the 1890s, I'd say. Um, and these are Mennonites. Mennonites uh, were the first people that came to the community in Waterloo. And they came up from the Pennsylvania region, originally from, from Europe, from Western Europe. And they're kind of like the Amish, like the Pennsylvania Dutch. And so they are a people of hard working, you know, toiling the land, very community minded, very pious. And they uh, are what we call barn raisers. And the reason they're barn raisers is that the community comes together to build a barn for uh, you know, your neighbor, for your competing farmer. But it's all about the mentality of, of raising a barn together because as a community, you're much greater than just as an individual. And so when we talk about the Waterloo region, we often talk about having a barn raising mentality and having that in our DNA. Although over the generations and generations, we've had immigration influxes from Germany, Scotland, the US, Asia, all over the place, many Syrian families now coming in. But I think that that mentality of collaboration and, and barn raising has still uh, permeated and it's very much uh, part of, uh, kind of what's instilled in you when you come to, to live in the region. What's interesting about this region is that despite our size, eight of Canada's largest tech companies are here. Christy Digital, I actually saw a lot of Christy projectors yesterday on our tour, uh, Canada's largest digital projection company. ComDev is Canada's largest satellite company. Open Text is Canada's largest office company. Blackberry, Blackberry, <laughs> and so on and so forth. Um, how I tie this back to the university is that the ones that have stars beside them are actually either spin-offs or associated firms from the University of Waterloo. And uh, so considering these firms came from the University of Waterloo and stayed, so they were started at the university or close to, they grew in the region and they've remained there employing thousands and thousands of people just because they want to be really close to the talent. In addition to those that have kind of set up, uh, come and, and or grown in the region, we've had a lot of really interesting companies that have come to the region um, to prosper. And uh, I mean, we've got some big, big names here, and they come for different reasons. Some of them come to acquire companies. Uh, some of them come to do research and development with the University of Waterloo. And uh, others just come because they want to be kind of at the hub of what's happening in terms of innovation, and they want to be very close to the talent uh, at, that's being kind of pushed out of the University of Waterloo. 
So Google, as an example, came to Waterloo in 2005. They purchased a three-person startup. Uh, subsequently, they've bought two other startups, but regardless, they've grown organically. They're at almost 400 employees. They just moved into a 185,000 square foot building and they're scaling to 1,000 employees over the next two years. Shopify came um, just last year. They're scaling to 400 employees. Huawei uh, moved up to 100 employees in six months. Square came, Jack Dorsey, when he came to, uh, to open up the office, uh, was telling anecdotal stories is that uh, he actually wanted the specific software engineer from Waterloo to come to the valley to work for Square down there. And this guy refused. He didn't want to live in California. He wanted to stay in little small town Canada. So he convinced Jack Dorsey to open up an office in Kitchener just because he knew that you know, being, having a great employee and building a team around that one great employee is going to be much more successful than trying to supplant someone into uh, a foreign space. So fun fact number two is that Kitchener-Waterloo, the Waterloo region, has the second highest startup density in the world after Silicon Valley. We love this, of course. Everyone loves the, you know, fun fact. Um, and the reason for that is that it's a very collaborative ecosystem, that you have incredible government, academic, and industry support that builds the ecosystem together, that supports it, and that helps this uh, startup activity. And I'll talk about that a little later. In the last two, uh, six years, since 2010, we've seen phenomenal activity um, in the startup scene. That is really attributed to the incredible work of our local incubators and the Accelerator Center. It's uh, additional talent being churned out by, by the post-secondary schools. It's the fact that we've had an influx of capital and that the demise of BlackBerry, which everyone is the number one question people ask, oh, how are you feeling about BlackBerry? That's terrible for you. It's actually been a godsend for the region because it has released an incredible amount of talent back into the region and has let executives help startups grow. It has brought in a lot of uh, clout into the region. So, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with this, some of these companies, but uh, we've got some unicorns here. Uh, Thalmic Labs just raised 120 million two weeks ago, which was the largest single raise in Canadian history. Phenomenal story. Um, most of these companies have been to Y Combinator and they've uh, all come back because they want to also be part of this really dense and collaborative ecosystem. Some of the key investors we have in, in Waterloo Region, I mean this list kind of is like a Hollywood blockbuster movie on, on investment and, uh, and this, you know, these investments continue to grow and uh, we're really happy especially that Amazon, uh, Intel and Fidelity were participated in that $120 million raise just very recently. Y Combinator, I mentioned it before, we have uh, a strong uh, ties to Y Combinator in the sense that the University of Waterloo essentially is a, a feeder to, to Y Combinator and uh, Sam Altman often comes up and mentors uh, startups and student teams and uh, he's placing big bets on what's happening uh, in and around Waterloo region. This is a map that was actually created um, by some government people, uh, regional government people, when they were pitching to the Ontario government for improved transportation. So I don't even dare complain about transportation between Toronto and Waterloo anymore because after this, <laughs> everything seems quite manageable. But uh, essentially what we were trying to prove is that the corridor between Toronto and Waterloo is almost identical to that between Silicon Valley and the Bay Area. And the density of companies at, you know, at both ends and essentially along that line is very similar. We have, um, we have uh, 200,000 tech workers along this corridor. Uh, the valley has, I think, 380,000 maybe. We have 6 million people that live along this corridor. Silicon Valley is, uh, you know, less than that to, to the Bay Area. But there are a lot of sim similarities here and people love to call Kitchener Waterloo or the water of the region Silicon Valley of the North or a snowy or Silicon Valley, but essentially we're moving beyond that and there are a lot of big bets and investments taking place in quantum, so we're now starting to promote ourselves as Quantum Valley. That's Mike Lazaridis, the founder of BlackBerry, who's kind of pegged that for us. So talking about the University of Waterloo, my kind of home within, within Waterloo region, the university has been named uh, the most innovative university in the world for, uh, sorry, in, Can in Canada for 24 years running. 
And uh, it's quite interesting because the university is not very old. It was only founded in 1957, but it was founded by a group of engineers, of business people, who wanted to have a new type of academic institution, one that works very closely with industry, one that attracts a certain type of student, researcher, and professor, and one that uh, really uh, brings ideas and moves them into the marketplace as, as quickly as possible. And so one of the founding principles was that any IP created at the university belongs to you which was unheard of in 1957. I mean, even now, I mean, there are many more universities that have this IP policy, but back then that was unheard of. I mean, why would you give away that incredible uh, licensing revenue? But Waterloo and the leaders at Waterloo said, no, if we want to attract entrepreneurial-minded professors, students, researchers, we need to give them the tools that they can actually bring their ideas and move those and potentially commercialize them. We also have the largest co-op program in the world. And so co-op is a, an interesting um, model. It's, we weren't the ones who invented co-op, but now we have over 19,000 students that participate in co-op every year. And what co-op is, is essentially um, you, are, you are spending your time in, in your academic studies, and that's offset by a term in industry or in a research institute. So, for example, if you're an engineer at the University of Waterloo, you have to go through co-op. You join engineering, and in your first year, you do full uh, two semesters of, of engineering, and then you start your co-op terms. So you go, you spend a month working at BlackBerry, or at Google, or at Amazon, and then you come back, and then you go back into the classroom. So you are constantly transferring knowledge. You are um, creating knowledge that's you know created in the in the actual co-op term, you're bringing that knowledge back into your academic realm, you're confronting with your professors, you're confronting them with ideas and technologies and uh, skills that you've acquired over this term and you're bringing that back into the classroom. So the professors always have to be on top and they have to work all year long, so they're pretty hard working. But it's, a, it's an astonishing program because we have 180 people that do nothing else but place 19,000 students every year uh, in over 6,000 companies across the globe. And students, I think the statistic for last year was that the students generated $225 million in salaries, and they keep that money. So at the same time, you're paying for your tuition, you're gaining real work experience, you're creating an incredible network that is going to help you get a job afterwards, or just maybe make connections for you to do your own thing the largest engineering school in Canada, largest concentration of computer uh, scientists and mathematicians in the world. And here is an empty slide that I obviously forgot to uh, update. It's the number one university for VC-backed entrepreneurs. Number one university for exits. These are all pitch book statistics. And the number one university in Canada for unicorns. And uh, again, uh, substantiation from the outside, Paul Graham, who says that the applications that he gets from the University of Waterloo are far and above beyond uh, what he's seen from other universities, which really instills us and proves to us that we're doing something right. And so what we are doing right, it goes beyond the university, of course. And the university provides incredible academic excellence, uh, tutelage, uh, and access to networks. But it's really about an interconnected uh, entrepreneurship, and Abdullah talked about this earlier at DMZ, what they do really well as well, is that they connect the dots and they're very open to building the networks and to helping, helping the teams and helping startups uh, grow. So we have different organizations. These aren't all of them, but these are kind of the biggest ones that I wanted to highlight. Conrad is where I am, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Communitech is essentially the hub of all activity around startups in the region. They have a great space, much like here. They have an uh, um, incubator program called REV, which focuses on sales and marketing. They uh, host a phenomenal amount of events every year, including Techtoberfest, which is happening right now. They um, house Velocity, which is uh, the University of Waterloo incubator. And they really are there to, to bring everyone that's important in the ecosystem together, not only in the region, but the ties to Toronto, the ties to Silicon Valley, Boston, New York, and beyond. Velocity is uh, an incubator program that was started out of the University of Waterloo. And it started as a, as a university residence, essentially, where students that had an entrepreneurial idea got together and they could live and, 
and do powwows every week. They would have uh, dinners and they could think about their ideas. And it grew out of that and it's now the largest free incubator in the world actually. And they have a focus on software, hardware and science. What's nice about Velocity is they also have a, a seed fund which was uh, started by a generous donation by Ted Livingston who is the CEO and founder of Kick, one of the largest messaging apps out there and a local unicorn. And essentially when he sold his first stocks back to VC, he took the million dollars or a million of however many he got and he gave it to the university and he gave it to Velocity and said, I want to use this money to start a seed fund for Velocity teams. We do not take any equity. We use this to give away. They have to pitch uh, three times a year. They have the opportunity to get $5,000 or $25,000 checks. So three times a year, teams get $125,000. $125,000 check possibilities. So it's really a lovely program. I think their survival rate is 67% after five years, which is quite quite great. St. Paul's Greenhouse is a social impact live-in incubator at the University of Waterloo. They're doing great things. So we work a lot with them. Um, the Accelerator Center is really for very mature late-stage startups. Their survival rate is 93% um, after five years, so really like blowing it up through the roof. They've had 55 grads uh, and the average uh, yearly revenue of those grads is $10 million. Google for Entrepreneurs does a lot of things. They're housed at Communitech and the Conrad Center is where I am. So I was mentioning uh, Jack Dorsey before and he's really, uh, he comes relatively often and he has uh, good things to say because he sees a lot of the things that we do in Waterloo Region, that the collaboration, the network and, and building building mentorship uh, is very similar to what's happening down where he is. The Conrad Business Entrepreneurship Technology Center, we are uh, the provider of academic curriculum and credits for students who want to explore entrepreneurship at an undergraduate and a graduate level. And we do that um, by having a program that's very entrepreneurial by design. So our instructors are all entrepreneurs there themselves. Uh, the instructor for finance is a venture capitalist. The instructor for marketing has his own data analytics company with 400 people and he's constantly going on leave because he has to scale his company faster and faster. But what we do is we try to attract uh, students that make want to make things happen. So we're not offering an MBA program. We have a Master's of Business Entrepreneurship Technology and we help those students build a network. We really want to imbue this entrepreneurial spirit in them. So by having a lot of networking events, by having them go through the 10 months a master's program and access to this ecosystem and beyond, they're really having the chance to either start and manage their own enterprise because some come in knowing exactly what they want to do, but they maybe need to find that co-founder that has the tech expertise or the business acumen or whatever it is that they need to, to complement. We help uh, those um, who maybe want to innovate within an existing business. There are those that come and then they graduate and they work to build up the ecosystem. So they'll go work at an incubator or they'll work at Communitech or one of our grads went to work at DMZ recently. Or they maybe just want to figure out how they can commercialize and license the technology at hand. Referring to kind of our activity in, in Latin America and Mexico specifically, for many years we've been uh, hosting summer programs for the uh, Tech de Monterrey. And we've had over 100 students come from under the undergrad level and they come with an engineering or a business or an arts background and they do one month of intensive entrepreneurship classes and workshops and visiting the ecosystem so they can get a better idea of, uh, of whether it's something that they'd like to pursue. There we go. I'm going to end it off with Justin Trudeau. Everyone loves to use Justin Trudeau as a publicist. He, uh, he comes often. He's a huge supporter of, of our region, of the corridor between Toronto and Waterloo. And he's really recognizing that what we're doing in terms of collaboration and building a greater ecosystem will have a huge impact on Canada as a whole and, and, and hopefully the world. So thank you for your time.